Welcome to Culture Talk. This is a segment where we talk about culturally relevant topics that you can use to start conversations about your faith. And I'm joined today with astrophysicist Jeff Soaring. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Sandra. Always enjoy being here. <laughs> we're going to be talking about the possibility of a global flood, and we're going to look at that from a scientific perspective. So just right. to kind of unpack this topic, the book of Genesis tells us that a flood covered the tops of the mountains, that the floodgates of the sky and the fountains of the deep were opened. Uh -huh. um, so from that, Christians posit that the flood was global and that it covered the entire surface of the earth. So right. let's discuss, discuss the scientific possibility of that. Is it scientifically possible that there's enough flood water, or enough water to mm -hmm. cover the entire surface of the earth? Well, that, that's one of the questions we can ask, uh, you know, the, whether it's a global flood has a whole lot of other implications to it or things you might measure. But one is, you know, you, there's a certain amount of water that it takes to cover the entire mm -hmm. earth. And, you know, you read the Genesis account. And one thing that's clear is that where the water came from, it went back to, and that's how it was cleared out. And so mm -hmm. we, we, what that means is that we can now go look at the amount of water that's on earth today and then ask the question, what sort of flooding would be possible with that? Now, I mean, there's obviously a lot of water on the earth today, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know, what's interesting is that if you take all the water that's on the, or all the water that's on the earth, it's about 330 million cubic miles. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those cool numbers. It sounds yeah. really impressive, but it's really hard to visualize. Um, one of the coolest visuals I thought is if you take it and just put it into a ball, mm -hmm. it's a ball that's about 860 miles across. Wow. So go from Utah to Kansas City, a ball of water that big. You uh -huh. think, okay, that, that could easily cover. But when you ask the question, okay, how large is the surface of the earth? What's the texture and everything? If you take all of that water and make the earth perfectly smooth, mm -hmm. it would cover the earth about one and a half, or about 1.7 miles deep. Mm -hmm. So you think, okay, that's a lot of water. But you go look at the surface of the earth today, you've got Mount Everest, which is roughly just under 300,000 feet, or sorry, 30,000 feet tall. Mm -hmm. You've got ocean trenches that are, uh, you know, 12,000 feet deep, yeah. and, then, or, and then you, or sorry, 12 miles deep, and then you ask the question, could the water that we have cover that terrain? And the answer is no, because 1.7 miles, you need about four times that amount of water to get up above Mount Everest. Right. So either, there had to be more water somewhere, which has been removed from the earth, or the terrain of the earth had to be very different. But to change the terrain of the earth very differently, that would leave geological signatures in the earth today, and we don't find any of those. So when you look at it, it's really hard to argue mm -hmm. there's enough water to cover the entire earth with a flood. Well, I like what you said about the, the geological markers that mm -hmm. we would see. So that's something that we would expect to see, but we don't see, is that correct? Well, yeah, to, because if you're gonna create mountains, so, mm -hmm. so if Mount Everest was created in the last few thousand years, mm -hmm. That requires a certain level of tectonic activity. Well, so you go hit a bowl of jello, you hit the bowl of jello, and it sits there and ripples for a while. Well, jello's jello, but if you do that to the earth, you create mountains, mm -hmm. it's going to ring inside the earth, and that lasts long enough that we would still be able to measure it today. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, either, like I said, you either have to have more water, mm -hmm. which I don't see where you'd get that, because the Genesis account seems to say that it went back to where it came from. Right or there's gotta be this massive tectonic activity which we have no signature of today. So right. barring God just doing things and removing any trace of it, the, glo the flood in Genesis, it doesn't look like it's global, which also corresponds to what goes on in Psalm 104 where God's talking about the third creation day that God sets a boundary for the water that never again will it transgress and cover the whole earth. So mm -hmm. it seems like the Bible's talking about a large but regional flood mm -hmm. and that's what the scientific evidence would indicate too. So then if the flood is, is not global in that it didn't cover the entire surface of the earth, um, what was so significant about it? Like why, what did it actually cover then? And what, did, what would be the signif significance of having a local flood? Well, so, so the significance there mm -hmm. is that this, you know, yes, it's a regional flood or a local mm -hmm. flood, but it's still a very large flood, mm -hmm. covers you know, a million square miles. You know, so mm -hmm. it's a lot of region in the Mesopotamia area. And if you look at the, the purpose of the flood in scripture, it was to judge all the sinful reprobate mm -hmm. humanity. Mm -hmm. And you look in Genesis and it seems like humanity never spread out beyond kind of the Mesopotamia region. So a flood in the Mesopotamia region would have judged all of humanity, which is what the Bible said happened in the flood and said that God would never do again. Yeah. So we've had large regional floods 
but never has there been one flood that judged all of humanity. Right. So I, I think that's very helpful because when we think of the flood, at least for me as a kid, I thought, okay, well, I, I didn't really think through it too much, but if you had mm -hmm. to sit me down and ask me, I probably would, would have thought it covered the entire earth. Right. Um, not knowing about migration and mm -hmm. where humanity existed at the time. So at the time of the, the flood, when was it about? Uh, you know, probably, you know, you know, Hugh puts a date on it somewhere mm -hmm. back in the last ice age, something on the order of 50, 60,000, 40, 50, 60,000 years ago. Okay, so I definitely didn't know where humans <laughs> were at that time. <laughs> right. But um, they would have been localized. They wouldn't have really migrated uh, across the entire globe. Well, that is, that is something, I think, in our model, we say that, yes, humanity it was in that local region, mm -hmm. then after the flood it migrated out. Because we're committed to what the biblical, what the Bible seems to teach is that it judged all of humanity. Mm -hmm. And so if there were humanity spread out across the earth and then there was a regional flood that wiped out, that would not satisfy what the Bible is right. talking about, about that flood. So, uh, you know, evidence, or you know, so our scientific evidence, all the evidence seems to be that we were in the Mesopotamia region. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Bible seems to talk about. And so that flood would wipe out all of humanity and everything that humanity had touched which seems consistent with God's character. Right, and and I think it, it lands nicely with the old earth creation model, exactly. which is a model for um, reasons to believe, right. the organization. Um, so I have a question then, because it's something that I actually heard when I was at the Grand Canyon, mm -hmm. and maybe you've heard this as well, that the flood is actually what carved those mountains. So when you talk about the amount of water needed, mm -hmm. that it maybe would have been a smoother surface, but the flood actually carved these, um, something like the Grand Canyon. If you think about that, that mm -hmm. kind of harkens to the Grand Canyon is over a mile deep. Mm -hmm. Well, for the water to do that, the water's gotta be able to go down to something. Mm -hmm. So you've gotta have water being up and water low. And so, so you run into problems there because the other problem with a global flood is that the global flood lays down most of the geological features. So it had to lay down all of the features of the canyon, compact it, build the canyon up and then carve it out. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of problems that exist with a global flood from a scientific perspective. But I also think a global flood really is a challenge to fit with what the Bible says. Because again, if you go look at Psalm 104, when God created on day three, he separated the land from the water. Mm -hmm. And in Psalm 104, it tells us never again will water cover the entire earth. Well, mm -hmm. if you've got a global flood, now you've got this inconsistency mm -hmm. between Psalm 104 and uh, the Genesis creation or the Genesis flood. So it's talking then about a primordial earth that water was covering the entire surface, which is what we would read in, in Genesis 1. On day three, right. Right, and then after that, no more. N never right. again will it return right. to cover the earth. Right. So if that's correct, then mm -hmm. the Genesis flood cannot be global in that sense. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. There's definitely a lot to unpack with there this is. topic. Um, you've got a blog on this topic. So it I'm is. gonna point our, our readers to that. Is there anything else you wanna add on this topic? No, I just, it's a, it's one of those, it's a fascinating, it's one of these that Christians have talked about, and I'm sure we'll keep investigating, trying to research and figure mm -hmm. out what does the scientific data say about yeah. the, the flood in Genesis. Yeah, and really, I like how you're comparing the scientific data and then the biblical account and how um, it aligns. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for that, Jeff. So if you want to hear more on this topic, go to reasons.org and search, is a global flood scientifically possible?